In this video, we are fitting a BRZ front bumper to the Nissan 300ZX, and I'm going to be taking you guys through the entire process from beginning to end. I won't be skipping out on any of the sanding, the filling, all the extra stuff that a lot of people will skip out on showing you. I'm going to show you every little bit, so sit back and enjoy the entire process. Also, if you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's free. You could always change your mind later. Enjoy. The first thing that we're doing is hooking the bumper up to the car. This way, when we use the foam and start filling it in, we are going to get the exact shape that we want and it's not going to be mismatching. Here all I'm doing is measuring from the ground to make sure that everything is even. Here what we're doing is sanding around the edges of the headlight that's going to be filled in. This way the fiberglass has something to grip to and it will make it stick better. I'm also backing it with wax paper so when I use the foam um, it'll attach to the wax paper and then actually be able to really nicely rip off which is great and reduces a whole bunch of mess and extra finessing work. All I'm using to fill the holes is the Great Stuff Foam. You can find this at any hardware. It's just meant to expand fillets, that way we can trim it down to the shape we want later. Here I'm putting more wax paper over top and pinning it in with just little tack nails or whatever they're called. But this is just to keep the fiberglass onto the top layer and sticking to the front bumper as well. Because I don't want to stick into the foam because from past experience the foam is really really hard to get off. Um, once something gets stuck into it it meshes in the fiber. So I'm trying to make sure to avoid that and it works really well. So about the way that I'm spreading the fiberglass resin, um, we're not going to talk about that. I didn't have a brush handy and I made do with what I had and it worked. So <laughs> yeah, let's just ignore this part. So I am constantly experimenting with new ways to lay the fiberglass smoother for custom parts that don't have a backing without making a mold. So if you want to see the progress on that, just keep your eyes on the videos and you'll see new ways each time.
What I'm doing here is using a metal brush to scrape off any of the excess glue from the logo that had come off and then getting it all prepped for the fiberglass filler. When laying the fiberglass filler and body filler, I like to do excess for the first few layers because you're going to sand most of it off anyway and it's a lot easier to sand off than it is just to tediously reapply and reapply until you have enough. Um, either way works, so if you're a bigger fan of starting small and then working your way up, that's totally fine to do that, but this is just the way that I prefer. Also a little tip here, if you need to fill little gaps like there where it may have chipped off, just using blue painter's tape or any painter's tape on the backing is great to set a nice base and the tape comes right off. I like to do an extra layer of fiberglass resin on the back just to add some more strength from behind just in case the fiberglass cloth is just a little too thin. Here all I'm doing is using degreaser to clean up where the resin is and then heat gun to dry it off so I can apply the body filler and have it stick really well. This is where the tediousness of bodywork really begins. About here is where I'd normally cut off the video and just skip to the final product, but I'm not doing that this time. So first off, I start marking everything that needs fiberglass, pinhole filler, more filler, and we're just starting by repeating each process over and over until everything is filled and smooth because it's really hard to get everything perfect the first time. So just be patient and fill every little hole that you can because Honestly, it really does pay off at the end to spend the extra hours in and not skip steps. A tip when filling pinholes with body filler, just make sure to press all the way in, otherwise the body filler may just glaze over the hole and not actually cover it. Learn from experience.
The tape here isn't actually to prep for painting. This is just to make sure that when I'm sanding, I'm not scraping the bumper right there because it has a texture to it. So if I do accidentally sand it, then I won't be able to get the texture back. So I'm just trying to protect myself from making those mistakes. Here what I'm doing is sanding everything with 220 grit, trying to get through the clear coat to the base so that way the paint sticks really well because we're going to be doing quite a few layers of primer just to make sure that we can see all the flaws and cover everything that we can. This is the most important part right here, which is just getting the bumper cleaned up and ready for paint. So take a nice degreaser, microfiber towel, and go ahead and clean everything off. Get every little bit of dust off because if you paint over dust, then that'll seal that dust in, which will just make the paint weak and more likely to chip and peel. So you don't want that. So take the extra time. It takes 30 seconds to a couple minutes and it is 100% worth it because it can make or break your entire project. And you're putting in so many hours to the bodywork, you really don't want to have it ruined by flaky paint. This first layer of primer is mostly just to cover everything and all it's really meant to do is meant to expose any flaws that happen in the bodywork because now that everything is one color and not multicolored with every filler that you have on there, you're able to see all the mistakes, all the rises, all the dips, and all the pinholes especially. So this is really just to expose those so we can make it perfect because as you can see right here, every little dot is a pinhole that I missed even though I covered it multiple times. So now we're just going through with Bondo, filling it back in, pressing in deep, making sure all those are Build. Then we're going to come through it with 220 grit sandpaper, sand it all down, start attacking all those little rough areas and making this from what would look like an at garage DIY to a little bit more professional job. Just a friendly reminder to remember to clean your parts before you paint them so you don't waste 15 hours. As expected, that last coat revealed more pinholes that had been missed, so we're going through with pinhole filler, filling those in, and then going to hit it again.
So that's pretty much where we're gonna end the video. There is still work to do, as you can tell. Just gotta mount it. <laughs> I just need to mount it up a bit stronger and do some more molding with it because the ridges didn't quite line up as expected, which is fine. This is all a work in progress, but once I get more solid mounts, that'll definitely help that out a lot. But let me show you guys really quickly what needs to be fixed and what the plan is for the next one. So there's a few main parts. Mounting it, I need to get this flush along the edge there, same with the other side. And then once I get that solidly mounted, um, this part here is too low in comparison to the rest of the bumper. So I need to blend that up, but obviously I need to get that mounted first. On the bright side though, the rest of it turned out really well, super smooth all the way across. Um, if there's anything that I missed once I'm going over the full bodywork for the car and smoothing everything out, I am going to go over all my custom pieces and redo those. So that's the plan there. Now for the next video, what's going to happen is we are going to do all the cool aesthetic parts. So front splitter, we're going to get the lights, not these ones, but the signal lights that are now underneath. We need to remount them on the bottom here. And then we also need to get the flare attached to the side there. And that should take a bit of time. I'm hoping I can get that out next week, at least part one of it, but we'll be able to see what happens because um, I'm not concerned about the front splitter. Just once we get into molding work with the part here and getting the flares molded, that's gonna take a bit of time and just waiting for uh, filler and whatever else, the fiberglass to dry, just, just takes time. So I uh, hopefully we'll have that out for you. If not, we'll see. Finally, before I go, go ahead and check out the link to the merch down below. We got sweatshirts and other stuff. I uh, like phone cases, posters, awesome, nice stuff. So go ahead and check it out. Um, every little bit goes right back into the cars and helps me create content for you because cars are expensive and so um, anything I can get will help. So thank you guys so much for that. Don't feel obligated though to if you don't want to. Just an extra. If you want to support the channel, this is a great way to do so. Other than that, don't forget to do the usual dislike, unsubscribe, hit in the comments. Bye!